Hello again, everyone. Today I'm going to be doing a follow-up on a video I did earlier this week on beam paints. So following filming that video, I did notice that the paints dried uh, a little bit chalky. So this is the these are the swatches that I did earlier in the week on the white paper. So they did dry a little bit chalky, which is which is generally uh, something that I associate with gouache, and uh, they they dried very fast as well. But I also wanted to try them on black paper because when I went back and looked at the website listing, they said that these colors would actually be uh, suitable and, and very good for black paper. So I'll bring this back out at the end so that we can compare the black paper to how it looks like on the uh, regular watercolor paper. And um, so here's the little bag that it came in. I'm going to put that off to the side. And then here's the palette. Uh, like last time, I am going to wet these before I get started on the swatches, but in the meantime, I'm gonna show you where I'm going to be swatching them. So this is my all black Cheek Sparrow notebook. I'll put a link to the video where I go through the setup of this, but basically I have uh, put watercolor uh, swatches in here that are, um, suitable for black paper. This is not black watercolor paper, so we may get a little bit of a different result than we would on black watercolor specific paper. Um, but it still should show up there and let's see how, how it works. So uh, on this other side, I have the Schmincke Pearlescent or Pearl Metallic watercolor. I will put a link below to the, the video where I swatched these as well. So you'll have the setup for this traveler's notebook and then you'll have these swatches. I'm not gonna show you the other swatch pages, but I do wanna do this on this page. So I think what I will do, just so that this is not distracting, is I will cover this page up with the little wrap here and I will put the um, little brick of paints here. So let's go ahead and wet these one by one with a little dollop of water before I get started. And I did get the color names of these colors. I put it put the color names in the description box for the last video, but I will also label these during the video today so that you will be able to see what colors they are there as well. So let's see, I think that's the last one. Okay, so I'm gonna start with white again and go around this way. So I'll go in the same order that I went on the uh, watercolor paper. I will zoom in just a little bit here so you can see this bigger and I will put it up to the, to the camera closer as well. So this will be interesting. I haven't really used a lot of gouache on black paper. Okay, so, so we're, we're essentially getting a little bit of a milky look which is generally what you would get with um, opaque watercolors here. And yes, the water, the watering beforehand is definitely key because that is helping so much with, with wetting these colors and it's like no problem to activate at all. But yeah, but you'll see they kind of fade and become a little bit chalky. So it'll be interesting. Oops, this, I did not put water on this one, I don't think either that or it all absorbed. Um, so it'll be interesting to see the variety of color here and how they show up. And obviously if you make your, your brush less wet and try to get more pigment, you, it will show up a little bit more opaquely on the paper. So I am using a little bit of water on my brush. So um, you can always play with that and see, you know, how, how opaque the color is given how much water you include. And gouache is not necessarily my normal medium. I'm, I'm normally working with regular watercolor where more water is always encouraged, if not uh, sort of the, the, correct, the, the correct way to use regular watercolor. Okay. 
So I do find it very interesting how they're showing up. And you could make it really, really concentrated and use these with a, a dip pen. You could do that with watercolor as well, but uh, this might work better on black paper. Okay, nice. I kind of like the, uh, the milky look that you get here. Okay, I'm gonna do I'm gonna go on to another row here. And I'm actually gonna skip that one so I have room for the title up at the top. Blue actually shows up quite well. And I think too, as I'm going, I probably should have uh, saturated these with water a little bit beforehand because the longer the water is sitting with them, the more uh, easily they are re-wet just generally. So, yeah, so interesting. So this is just a different way to use your gouache on black paper. So that's the last one. So for now, I will label these at a different time. I'm not gonna do that on camera, but I will show you that this one is limestone white. This is cream. This one is pumpkin, morning peach, rose, beach rose, lavender, sky blue. But see how that was super dark when we first started, but now it's kind of faded. This is robin's egg, spring leaf green, and fall poplar yellow. And I never was able to tell what this little sample, sample color is, but I will also put it on here so that we can just compare like with like on the white paper. And these colors are already labeled other than that sample. So here you'll see, here's the black paper. And these are in the same order here as they are here. So it's a little bit more nuanced, I would say on this paper, you're getting more sort of light tones here. Okay, well, I just wanted to compare those. I'm also gonna put it up close to the camera so that you can see that one last time. There you go. All right, that's all I had for you today. Feel free to like and or subscribe, and I hope to see you next time. But in the meantime, have a great day. Thanks so much, bye.